to left on your screen and their home whites with the blue and yellow trim while the Victoria Shamrocks in that customary white, green, and gold with the Shamrock on their chest. They're all set to start this one. Five points is the cushion. The Shamrocks out in front of the Coquit Mad Max for the battle of first place. So Coquitlam currently tied with the Maple Ridge Burrards for second spot. And the Adnax has spent most of the season in that position. Ball on the right side. Here's Bob Klein, number 41. Moves it in. Walder made a quick pass for Kruger, and he tests the goaltender, Marty O'Neill, with a quick shot. And that's a great way for O'Neill to get into the game. Kruger shooting a little bit past where he'd like to shoot. A little off balance. Didn't have much behind that shot. Gives Marty O'Neill an easy save to get a uh, touch of the ball and get into the game early. Here's Bill Cowan. Goes in behind the net for Pat Coyle. Coyle's pass, an errant one with 20 on the shot clock. Gives it Dallas Elliott, the goaltender, time to go back after it and send it back up the floor. The Shamrocks without Gary Gate in the lineup tonight as Gate is only playing in one game thus far this season, picking up eight points in that one game against the Burnaby Lakers earlier in the year. And you won't see Gary Gate probably for a while as uh, Gary Gate is getting ready for the World Championships in Baltimore. Yeah, an unfortunate break for the Shamrocks because, of course, Gate was supposed to be out here playing for the bulk of the month of June and uh, hurt his ankle playing field across in the East Coast. And, uh, of course, now, as you mentioned, the World Championship coming up very, very soon. And uh, he's not going to take any chances at uh, hurting that injured ankle before, uh, prior to that World Championship. Here's Alton Davis being checked by Coyle. He loses control of the ball, goes inside the left corner, where after it is number 24 for the Coquitlam Madnax. And that is A.J. Smith. Smith wearing number 24 tonight, goes off for a rest. And here come the Adnax one more time with number seven, Chris Bride. And a minor interference call will go against Coquitlam. It'll be Victoria Ball. One minute, 30 seconds into this opening period. No score in the Pro Joy Lacrosse game of the week. And so far, both teams kind of feeling each other out. Neither have got any real serious scoring attempts or scoring uh, chances so far. And both teams looking a little bit tentative uh, in this first few minutes. Bruce Alexander, the big man out there for the Shamrocks. And now here comes Coquitlam's Pat Coyle. Coyle goes off for a change. The Adnax send out some fresh legs. Here's Troy Cordenley. Cordenley number 40 has control of the ball. Cordenley from, or played for Six Nations last year in the lineup for the Adnax this year. Also played for Buffalo in the National Indoor Lacrosse League. And there's an opportunity there, right into the stick of Darcy berth -Jong. And it'll be Victoria Ball with two minutes and 20 seconds played. And of course, Cordingly out here full time now, early in the season. He was coming in for the occasional game. He's a school teacher by trade. And of course, now that school's out, he's with the Adnax full time. And they're glad to have him on board uh, for every game. Now. On the left side, setting things up. Here's Brad Downey. Downey looks for a man heading his way. It's fine. And Fine loses control of the ball, and Neil Doddridge is off to a great start this season, has control of the ball. And that one now goes into Coquitlam territory. Warren Blackwell for Victoria. Digs up after a loose ball, one of the players we featured in our pregame. And now it's Coquitlam's turn to bring it up with three minutes played. No score here from the Coquitlam Sports Center. Here's Callan. Callan goes one-on-one -on, -one on Doddridge. Doesn't find any room, Walder. Right side for Coyle, inside for Kruger, back to Walter, and Walter tests O'Neill, and O'Neill holds on to his ground. Walter comes in front of the net, takes a shot, the rebound is there. Now Callan the shot, O'Neill again the save. Loose ball is in front of the net, the Shamrocks trying to pick it up. And they don't do so, but Rusty Kruger comes in for a set. Who wants the ball? Whoever will get it, Coquitlam does, and they steal. They retain possession with 15 on the shot clock. Hit front for Kruger, scores! Rusty Kruger taking a pass from Bob Klein. It's 1-0 Coquitlam. And a nifty move by Rusty Kruger. We'll see on the replay. He just puts a little bit, all, just a bit of a hesitation fake on Marty O'Neill. Gets him to go down, and the timing of the shot is excellent. He just releases the ball just as O'Neill is going down. We'll see it here. There's a little bit of a fake. We'll see O'Neill stick him up off the floor. Bounces it down between his legs. And it's a 1-0 uh, Coquitlam Adnac League. 16-19 remaining in this first period. And really the first, first time that anybody had control of the ball for a good couple of minutes there. Rusty Kruger, the assistant number 41, Bob Klein. Time of the goal, 341. Here's a chance in front of the net. A good opportunity for Coquitlam. 
And the announcement was Kruger is 24th goal on the season from Pine at 341. And number 23, Dean Richards on the floor had that opportunity. There's Mitchell taking a shot. That goes in behind the net into the stick of number seven, Chris Bride. Up top, Dean Richards. Richards right in on goal, takes a shot wide of the bottom right corner. And Richards, a former Richmond outlaw, the junior draft from Coquitlam way, way back and Oh, I'm only guessing, beating myself here, probably about 94. Yeah, 93 or 94. He's been around for a while, but of course, a very good roller hockey player and played with the Voodoo a couple of years ago. I'm not sure who he played with this year, played with recently, but he's back in the lineup for the Admets. 1-0 is the score and the goal by Kruger, the Coquitlam Admax leader. Rob Dawson, up from ball in from Nanaimo, played there last year, getting 42 some odd points. And here's Tyson Elias, takes a shot and tests the goaltender. Dallas Elliott in between the pipes for Coquimla. Elliott again makes a save, the ball goes in behind the net. Now it takes a strange bounce in front of the net there where Coquitlam is able to retain possession. And so far, you know, we talked about Victoria having off to a fast start and they certainly haven't done that. They really look sloppy, uh, very indecisive. The shots they've taken haven't been good shots. Alex certainly hasn't really been tested yet and uh, the Adnex have been able to control the ball for long periods of time by getting the loose balls and uh, that's certainly going to wear the Shamrocks down if it continues to go in that way. Pass in front of the net. Here's down. Down he sends it out the front. Comes Coquitlam, they take a shot, loose ball there. If he can get to it, Courtney does, and they get a new 30. Good work there by Coquitlam. John Wilson with the ball now. Left side goes Aaron, right into the stick of the goaltender O'Neill, and he'll hold on to it, and it'll be Victoria ball. Yeah, great move by Troy Courtney. They're going to split the defense and get that loose ball, but just another indication of Victoria being a little bit sluggish so far this evening, because uh, that's a loose ball that normally you'd expect them to get to very quickly. Neil Dodgers attempts a shot, goes off of a Coquitlam player about two inches in front of him, and quickly the other way here. It's number 24, A.J. Smith in the foot race on Dodgers, and Dodgers wins that one by using his stick to cutely knock it out of the stick of A.J. Smith. Now rising quickly on the two-on-one with Blackwell, and Blackwell couldn't initiate that pass. And the other direction is Rusty Kruger with the ball. Kruger last year's rookie of the year, off to a great start this year, scoring his 24th goal of the season here tonight. Matt Coyle, defensive player of the year last year. To Klein. Klein gets it. Now Coyle with it in front of the net. Callan takes a shot. O'Neill doesn't know where it is. But there to pick up the loose ball is number 12, Brian Nicola, who missed all of last year. Another holdout from the Burnaby Lakers team. Yeah, and some great ball control, some great ball movement by the uh, by the Quintle Madinax, ending up with a good shot by Callan and an equally good save by Marty O'Neill. Hard check thrown there, and now Coquitlam's Dallas Elliott, the Philadelphia Wings playoff MVP, MVP of the National Indoor Lacrosse League, of course, the Wings the champions this past winter. Here's Colby Rope, the first round draft choice of the Coquitlam Adnax. He is a Coquitlam Junior Adnax graduate. Coquitlam loses control of the ball. Tyson Lyons does a good job there of controlling the ball, and he'll get caught with the crease violation. Yeah, Elias pushed back into the crease by the Coquitlam player. Not too happy with that call. Right. A bit of a borderline call, but unfortunately it's one the referees have got to make because it's one of those black and white rules. There's no discretion involved. He's either in the crease or he's not, even though he is. Uh, he was pushed in in that case. <laughs> Del Halliday out there on the floor now, who just happens to be our profile player on this week in our first period intermission. 12 minutes, 18 seconds left in this first period. A 1-0 lead for the Coquitlam Madness. Dell Halliday, speaking of Dell, off to a great start this year. is sixth year in the league. Yeah, Halliday having a great year and one of one of many Victoria players that are uh, that are going to be going to represent Canada in that World Field Across Championship you mentioned. Hopefully we'll get a chance during the broadcast to mention all the players involved that are uh, going to be going down to Baltimore for that World Cup. Gordon Lee off to the right side. Here's Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Blue Man in the parking lot. Dell out there now. John Wilson in control of the ball in the right corner. Wilson takes a shot, goes right on O'Neill. He didn't know where it was. It hit him high. It looks like he's hurt. And the referee quickly blows his whistle. And they'll give the goaltender O'Neill some breathing room and a bit of a play stoppage to see if he's okay. And I got a hunch that caught Marty O'Neill up on the neck. We might get a look at it here. Hard to say from that, uh, from that angle, but I think it caught him up on the neck. 
and uh, he I'm guessing he should be okay, but uh, trainers out there looking at him now. But uh, not a very good ad for the pads that Marty O'Neill <laughs> makes. He goes down with a shot like that from, uh, from John Wilson from outside. Of course, Marty O'Neill, the goalie store, one of our sponsors. Here you look at Alton Davis on your screen having a bit of a drink and a breather, and there's the head coach, Normal Dillon. The recent scores from this past week, the North Shore Indians upset the Coquitlam Adnax 10-9 here in Coquitlam last Saturday. And the Victoria Shamrocks with the win over the North Shore Indians, who are playing good lacrosse as of late. Of course, North Shore last week acquiring Russ Hurd in a deal from the Burnaby Lakers, which seen some cash and future considerations go Burnaby's way, as well as the, ninth, or the year 2000 uh, first-round draft choice. Yeah, that's one of those deals that cer certainly uh, North Shore over the short term gets the, uh, gets the advantage in that trade. But of course, when in, whenever draft choices are involved, you never know. It, it could be four or five years till you really see exactly who gets the advantage in that. The other thing, too, of course, is the uh, future considerations. That's something that will be worked out after the season between the management of the two teams. And uh, that could sway that trade uh, heavily in Burnaby's favor if it uh, works out uh, to their benefit. Speaking of goaltending, the Victoria Shamrocks with the lead in the league as well as in the goaltending department. There you see Jim Rankin, of course, Rankin mostly from the Nanaimo Senior B squad. Bob Hayes and Marty O'Neill usually take up the job as the goaltenders. Rick Mang is gone from New Westminster, so it's up to Matt Disher and Tyrone Willishaw, who played for Langley last year with the Rebels. And the rest of the goaltenders will catch up to later. Quickly on the faceoff, Steve Kissinger right in there. Goal! Great save there by Elliott, because Kissinger was able to walk right in with some good speed. Right side quickly, here comes Wilson, puts it up for Troy Cordley. Cordley lost control, but still with a tight to behind the back shot. And that one goes into the stick of Rusty Kruger. New shot clock for Coquitlam, 11 minutes, 15 seconds left in this first period, a 1-0 lead for the Adnax. This guy has got the goal, his 24th of the year. Kruger puts it in, goes off of O'Neill, in now for Klein. They call it a shot on goal, a new shot clock for Coquitlam. Walter tests the goalie, Marty O'Neill. You'd expect Coquitlam to start taking some high shots after O'Neill got clipped there off. Here's Rysick. Rysick, the shot, Elliott holds onto it, and it's Coquitlam ball. Yeah, that's a great bit of anticipation by Dallas Alec. You saw Rysick hold the stick out to the inside of the floor to his left, try and pull it back short side. I think just stepped across, took that short side away from him. And yeah, as you say, you might expect the Adnax to go high on Marty O'Neill after that shot to the neck, uh, put him down for a few minutes. But realistically, at this, uh, this level of lacrosse, the, uh, the so-called high hard one doesn't really have that much effect on a goal. If anything, sometimes it motivates him to play better. Number 23, Dean Richards loses control of the ball, and now Andy Ogilvie who's chasing a bit of a milestone himself, looking for goal number 200 in his career. But I, I'm going with my calculations. It says he has that goal number 200. Mind you, we do have an old paper here. It says uh, June 28th, but he has 199. So if he's there already, congratulations. If not, he's chasing. We talked about Tyson Elias chasing a 600-point plateau for career points. Here's Elias again, shot! And a new shot clock for Victoria when they get control of the ball. And Marty O'Neill does so. Nine minutes, 45 seconds to go in this opening period. One to nothing for Coquitlam. And the Pro Joy Lacrosse Game of the Week from the Coquitlam Sports Center. Now Tyson Elias being checked by Dean Richards. Elias right side for Fair. Quickly moved it off. Shot by Berth. Give him right on. Elliot the save. And he'll move it up quickly. Wes Windgrove having a look at his troops as they make a full change. Here's Brad Downey. Downey from Nelson, British Columbia. First pick, eighth overall in 96. Played for Whittier College. Field across. Down on the right side, John Wilson quickly fires at the length of the floor as the shot clock ran down to zero. And it'll be Victoria Ball. And our stats mavens down in the truck have informed me that uh, indeed Andy Ogilvy is still looking for goal number 200. So we know that if he does score tonight, there's going to be some uh, chasing for that ball out of the, uh, out of the uh, Victoria net. Chris Pratt now takes a shot off the target. Didn't miss by much. And the other way, here's Marty O'Neill. O'Neill bounce pass up for Neil Doddridge. 
Dodgers goes one on one, now goes one on two on Bedell. Dodgers puts it for Blackwell, who's had a great season, and that shot clock runs down to zero, and now it's Coquitlam's ball. And eight and a half minutes remaining in this first period, and the Victoria Shamrocks still really haven't got into a groove, and I think uh, they're very, very fortunate at this point only to be down one goal. O'Neill's played very well, the Adnacks have shot uh, poorly in some cases, and the combination of those two things have kept it at a one goal deficit. Pass attempt for Callan, and Victoria intercepts that one. Here's Dodgers. Pass pass for Dell Halliday, who's having a well year. Halliday almost got loose there. Looking for goal number 37 on the season. Dell Halliday having a whale of a year. And, and that's not how he got his first 36 goals by, uh, by that, uh, whatever that move was. For a guy that only got 11 goals and eight assists last year. Tell me if he's having a great year. Yeah, Halliday's a guy that's finally blossomed as Bill Callan scores number two for the Adnacks. And Dean, he does. And that'll give the Adnacks that two nothing lead as he took a pass from Walder. And a very simple pick and roll here. We'll see Callan comes up right there in the pick, and both men go to Walder. Alton Davis has got to get slide off and get to Callan much quicker than that. Whether it was Davis's fault, though, we'll never know. Because in a situation like that, nine times out of ten, it's poor communication or a lack of communication that's at fault. And, uh, we don't know who was at fault in that case. The assistant number 22, Jason Walder, down to the goal 12 15. Just they want to assist to Walder. And Bill Callan picks up the, the goal. As Coquillum now in control. And for Callan, his 21st goal of the year. Here's a chance in front of the Ogilvy. Just almost had goal number 200 as he fired it just wide. And that's a case where Blair Mitchell stopped right at the faceoff circle to dump that pass over to Ogilvy. He's got to take that ball right down to the crease because Ogilvy ended up with a very poor shooting angle. If Mitchell had carried that ball for maybe 20 more feet, I'm sure Ogilvy would have number 200. Victoria now throws the ball away right into the stick of Alice Elliott off it bounced after it bounced off the boards and now Blair Mitchell one of the better face-off men for Coquitlam last year I don't think he sees a lot of face-offs this year compared to last year but he's off the floor now on the right side Coquitlam here's Johnny Wilson getting the clear and Wilson just fires it wide I think it might have grazed the, the crossbar but it goes down the, the length of the floor must not have. They would, uh, would they have given him a new 30 for the yeah, crossbar? They would have yeah. a new shot clock if they had the crossbar. But that, even though Wilson missed the net, that's something I'm sure the Adnac brass have got to be pleased with, that he's challenging, going for goal. And, you know, he's a natural goal scorer. And with a natural goal scorer, it's going to take a little time for him to get his, uh, to get his timing down. And, uh, but just the fact that he's getting those opportunities is going to make Coach Les Wingrove and his staff happy. Here's Steve Kisslinger. In front of the net, there, a good opportunity for Alton Davis, the loose ball now here up for Brad Downey. Downey one-on-one. -on -one. He's going against Kisslinger, and Downey gets close to the crease. Not too close to lose possession, still has the ball, and Kisslinger does a great job to force that one away from him. An outstanding job by Kisslinger. What we saw there, we talked about Kisslinger on our broadcast. Excellent defensive field across player from New York, and that was a great example of field across defense, that wrap check, that step check, that stripped the ball from Downey. Played for the New York Saints of the NLL. And you mentioned from New York, from Mahopak. From Mahopak. Beautiful, Mahopak. beautiful downtown Mahopak. Five minutes and 40 seconds to go in this opening period. A two to nothing lead in the Pro Joy Lacrosse game of the week. I wish I could duplicate that, that, that Long Island accent and say Mahopak. I don't know what it would sound like. Imagine uh, the nanny on TV saying <laughs> Mahopak. That's about what it would be. And Bruce Alexander misses an opportunity for goal there in front of the net as he was set up. Coquitlam with that 2 to nothing lead. Goals by Callan is 21st and Rusty Kruger is 24th on the season. Coquitlam without Kevin Brunch tonight in the lineup. As Kevin has got work commitments. There's a shot right on and Marty O'Neill holds on to that one. On the right side, here's Brian Nicola. Nicola number 12 holds on to the ball. Goes into the slot, takes a shot, bounces off of a Coquitlam leg, and right into the stick of number seven, here's Chris Bride. Bride's got Warren Blackwell to beat. Bride right in and goal, shoots! Oh, and just misses the bottom left corner. And yeah, a good opportunity for Bride with some good hustle. Great move by Bride, and uh, didn't get much of a shot. But really didn't have too many options there. He, yeah, pretty good job by Blackwell to force him into a bad shooting position. We talked about Brian Nicola early. His first game tonight, he's only been to one practice. 
So I don't think we're going to expect an awful lot out of Brian Nickley tonight. I talked to him before the game. He wasn't expecting an awful lot out of himself, quite frankly. Uh, but he's going to be a great addition to the team once that playoff, uh, playoff time rolls around. Here's Blair Mitchell as he goes off for a change. Puts it into the stick of number 40, Troy Cordley. Right side for Johnny Wilson. Of course, Wilson acquired in a trade for Darren Anderson. Has seen Anderson go to the Burnaby Lakers, whereas Wilson wasn't playing for the Lakers. Great effort there for Brad Downey as he goes flying for the front of the net. And there's that field across style. Downey crashing the goal. There's a good look at it there. That's something, a move that, you know, five years ago you never would have seen in the Western Lacrosse Association. With so many guys playing field lacrosse now in the States, the young fellas playing in college, and so many people playing here uh, locally, it's become much more predominant. Rusty Kruger out of the box, takes a pass and gets checked there by Tyson Lyons. Lyons doesn't look like he's missing the beat at all. Steve Kissinger inside in front of the net for Lyons. Richard scores! That's a great ball movement, and the key there, we talked about with the uh, the Adnac break when, uh, when um, Blair Mitchell didn't take the ball deep. Well, this time the ball did go deep. Look where it is, way down there in the, in the corner with Doddridge gives, uh, gives Bertome a great cutting lane through the middle, took it, blasted it, and just powered it through Dallas Elliott. Elliott got a piece of it in his body, just kind of trickled in between his legs. Darcy Boutin, the assistant number two, Steve Kisslinger, and number 13, Tyson Lies. Down to the goal, 16-24. And Kisslinger and Lias pick up the assist. It should really be Doddridge and Lias. Kisslinger is being credited with the assist from Bert Kjom. And it's 2-1 lead now for the Coquitlam Maddenax. And for Bert Kjom, his sixth goal on the season. That's a big goal for the Shamrock because it really came against the flow of the play. The Maddenax had dominated for the first, uh, really the first 15 minutes of this period. Just as the clock runs down to zero, Neil Dodgers has an opportunity to score on the goaltender, and oh, almost out of his net there. The caught out of his net was Marty O'Neill as Jason Walder was waiting like a seagull at the other end of the floor for a long pass. Out of the box, Del Halliday, former North Shore Indian in his second season with the Victoria Shamrocks after starting his career in Victoria, after being a Victoria junior. Of course, Halliday, rookie of the year in his first year in the league, Spent a year back east, playing field across, joined the Indians for one season, back with our, uh, back with uh, Victoria last year, and as I started to say earlier, now really blossoming into the uh, offensive talent that they thought he would when he first came out of the Colby Rope with the ball. Colby Rope, number 44. Sends a pass up for Mitchell, and Rope is, is hammered by Alexander, the, the biggest guy out here today. Well, one of them. There's another guy that's not playing right now, Gord Reset, who wears number 66 for Victoria. Yes, that is the same George who said who was, uh, was he ever paid in heavyweight chapter? I'm not sure. My boxing history is not what it should be. If he wasn't, he was a contender, certainly, uh, several years ago. And what yes, Gordy Rousset is well into his 40s. So <laughs> there's hope for us. What are you asking me for? I've been hit over the head way too many times. <laughs> I can't remember. Right side, Victoria in control now. Here's all, I, the, all I know is I played against Gordy Rousset, so that's going to tell you how old he is. <laughs> Here's Darcy Kirby. Kirby puts it to the side of the net there. Pass attempt for Rob Dawson. Now, Pat Coyle. Coyle leaves it for Andy Ogilvie. Boy, are we gonna erupt when we see him get his 200. Because we'll know for sure that it's 200. Yeah, we and don't forget in our first period intermission, get with the game, it's breakaways. And of course, our first period recap. I think I promised earlier in that first period a feature on Del Halliday. I guess that will be in the second period. So, my mistake, but Nonetheless, here's Alton Davis. Davis. That's, that's all those hits in the head catching up on you, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we're, we're kidding a bit about Gordy Reset and his age and so forth, but I talked to Nermo Dillon earlier in the year when Gordy first talked about coming out with the team, and uh, he told him flat out, we don't want you as a fighter, we want you to be a good, solid defensive player, and that's what Gordy Reset can bring to this team. The big question, of course, is, is, is his fitness level. Victoria. Loses control, here's Rusty Kruger. Kruger looks for a lane. Pulls on it, gives it for Jason Walter. He can fire the ball, shoots it right on. And O'Neill, standing call on that, that Marty O'Neill goaltender equipment, holding that ball. Here's Warren Blackwell to center. Left side, Alexander. 
Pass in front of that, and great one over for Pratt, and he gets called for the crease violation. Alexander able to find Pratt breaking out of the corner. And a great, great one-on-one -on move, uh, one -on -one move by Chris Pr or Pratt. One of the quickest, shiftiest players in the league, and uh, probably one of the most underrated players in the league. And a minor interference against Coquillum, so it'll be Victoria Ball. With just seven seconds left in this opening period, and a 2-1 Coquitlam lead. Victoria, Alexander, quickly takes a long shot. Walder picks it up, fires it the length of the floor before the buzzer. And the buzzer does sound, and that's it for our first period of play here as you watch Coquitlam head off to the showers. They won't be showering, they'll be preparing for the second period action. There's your score after one. It's Coquitlam two and Victoria one. That's it up here. Let's take a break and go down to Don Bensmiller. Thanks, you guys. Yes, the score is two to one for the Adnax leading, and uh, not surprising with uh, Victoria showing up seven men short that the Adnax could come out quick against them. We'll see how the pace lasts, though, for the shortened Victoria bench during the rest of the game. Now, a regular feature on the lacrosse game of the week, this week, this week sponsored by ProJoy, is Get With The Game, where we tell you a little bit more about what goes on on the floor. And this week, we're going to talk breakaways, and here it is. get with the game. Joe, let's talk about breakaways. How many times in a game might we see a breakaway occur? Uh, breakaways may occur up to about seven to ten times a game, depending on the style of play, where, uh, you know, you might get a uh, defensive team who plays uh, defense a lot, and then they might not get that many fast breaks, whereas you get an offensive team who let the fast break a lot, and they get a goalie that can throw the ball well. What are some situations that might cause a breakaway to occur? Um, maybe, uh, you know, when you're playing shorthanded or something like that, uh, a shot off the goalie stops it, the uh, defensive team breaks to the bench, they send a guy at the front gate, that's one, and uh, maybe a shot on the goalie, uh, just a straight flash break, somebody breaks off the, off the shot, runs down the floor, goalie pops in the ball, um, and uh, basically maybe just a mischeck on the top of the floor, where someone strips the ball and they're gone, and uh, maybe off a pick, where you, somebody goes in and sets a nice front door, back door pick. Uh, Freeze himself up, open to the net, uh, the ball comes to him, they're in one-on-one -on, -one on the goalie. What are some good breakaway techniques to ensure that a breakaway is effective? Um, first of all, I think the most important thing is to get your floor positioning. Um, you don't want to be running straight down the floor because you're taking your angle away right away. So what you want to do is uh, take, go to the side of the floor where your stick is on the inside, and then you cut in, cut in a bit and uh, get positioning on the goalie. Making sure that you keep your stick high, therefore the goalie, he's got to be on his toes rather than if you get your stick low, he can, he can get set. And uh, just basically uh, stick high on your way to the net. Thanks, Joe. I'm Don Bensmiller. Remember, get with the game. After one period of play at the Coquitlam Sports Complex, the Adnacks lead the Shamrocks 2-1 to one on the Pro-Joy Lacrosse Game of the Week. Stay with us, more lacrosse action. And coming up, first period scoring summary, first period highlights, and second period action. The Lacrosse Game of the Week is brought to you by Pro-Joy Lacrosse the official team uniform of the BC Lacrosse Association. Get ready for the X-Line, built for combat. And welcome back to the first intermission show here at the Coquitlam Sports Complex. The ad next lead the Shamrocks 2-1. to one. And as usual, we're going to go to Dave and Terry to take a look at the scoring summary from the first period and the highlights. Take it away, guys. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Thank you, Don. And 5.8% shooting percentage for the Coquitlam Adnax in that first period for a team that controlled most of the play out shooting 17 to 11 to Victoria Shamrocks. Uh, not a real good shooting percentage, Dave. No, that's for sure. You'd like to be at least around 15%, 15 to 20% at least. 5% uh, not very good. But the good thing from the Adnax time, but as you say, they definitely dominated the period. I think Victoria considers, considers himself pretty fortunate to get over that period, only one goal down. They really only had a couple of decent scoring chances on Dallas Elliott. One of them went in, one Elliott 
exceptional save on, and then he had a couple of others that were so-so yeah. shots. Well, let's have a look at the summary. There it is on your screen. And 17 to 11, as mentioned, the shots on goal. Coquitlam with the edge, and 18.1% shooting percentage for the Victoria Shamrocks. There's the goal scorers. Bert Schoen cut it to a one-goal lead after Rusty Kruger and Bill Callen got things going for Coquitlam. Faceoffs won three to two in favor of the Coquitlam Adnax. So for Coquitlam, leading on the scoreboard as well as in all other departments and shots as well, uh, the shooting percentage is basically the only thing they're not leading in. <laughs> yeah, and as I say, as long as they're getting the opportunities, the coaching staff's going to be happy. We notice the faceoffs, three to two in favor of the Adnax. We talked about how strong Victoria was. That's going to be something that's very important in the minds of the coaching staff for the Adnax. If they can be around 500 in the faceoff department, they got a good shot at winning this thing. Highlight number one, we're going to look at the second goal, the goal by Bill Cowan. Yeah, and this is a nice pick and roll. There's Cowan will be coming into your screen right there. Bounces off of uh, bounces off of uh, Alton Davis, rolls in, takes the pass from Mulder. And as I mentioned, Davis certainly the one that appeared to be at fault in that case. But you've got to wonder how the communication was and what kind of a communication breakdown took place. Because that's normally the case of uh, when somebody gets in that wide open on a pick and roll. Somebody's usually uh, messed up communication-wise. Jason Walter able to pick off uh, or pick out Bill Callen out of that, so maybe we can give credit to Coquitlam or uh, Walter or else Callen getting in. It always, it's funny how you always seem to find the person who's at fault and getting the goal scored against them, and uh, that time, unfortunately, it was Alton Davis. So our next highlight is the goal by Bert Schoem, and uh, here it is. And the key here is look where Doddridge is, right down deep in the corner, gives Bertoma a great cutting lane, a nice diagonal cut coming through, so when he gets the pass, he doesn't have to turn his body to catch the pass. If he's coming straight across, he has to catch the pass, turn his body, get a look at the net and shoot. This way, he's coming in at an angle, catches the pass in one motion, lets it go. That's what happened there, a great goal by Bertoma. Well, Lloyd uh, Robbie is standing by, but uh, that one there that Neil Dodgers assists there means that he does get an assist that should go to Steve Kitzlinger. They credit Kitzlinger with an assist. I'm sure they'll change it later. As mentioned, Lloyd Robbie is standing by, and he's with Don Benzmiller. Thank you very much, Terry and Dave. Yes, Lloyd Robbie, general manager of the Victoria Shamrocks, joining me to talk about, first of all, tonight's, the start of tonight's game. Uh, what do you think so far? You're down some players, but um, what do you think of your team's performance so far? Uh, put it this way, uh, Coquitlam's come out and uh, played extremely well against us. Uh, I'm happy that it's only 2-1. They've played extremely well and they've got a lot of their own rebounds. And uh, at this moment, I'm thankful for Marty O'Neill. But uh, I'll take the 2-1 score and go, go to the dressing room. I'm very pleased. And Dave Evans mentioning in our pregame that Marty O'Neill having a great year. Now, speaking of being short of players, you're going to lose six players or so when the World Cup championships come around. What, what happens then? Uh, well, including Gary, uh, we're missing uh, uh, Jenner and Doddridge and uh, Halliday and Rysak and Tap. And also we're losing Doddridge once again to uh, Scotland. But uh, we've only got three games in a 17-day period. The league's been nice to us that way. So... We'll line up bringing up some uh, junior A's and maybe senior B out of Nanaimo and that and um, try and work a little bit harder to keep everything together. It'll be a difficult time. And what about your team's success so far this season? You're five points ahead of the second place team and what do you attribute that to this year? Uh, hard work. We've had very good goaltending this year. Uh, first, when uh, Marty wasn't around, we had Bobby Hayes. Played super for us. Kept us in a lot of games. And um, then when Marty came along, Marty's been playing extremely well for us. The guys have been working hard, uh, even though we've been missing quite a few players game in and game out, but uh, hard work and good goaltending keeps it together for you. So what are we going to see from your team when everyone's here? Hopefully a lot of excitement. <laughs> I have a lot of breathing room for myself <laughs> and my coaching staff. <laughs> now, is the ultimate goal of the Shamrocks this year a Man Cup championship again? Us, like three other teams in this league that will go to the playoffs, we all want to uh, have the opportunity to go to the Man Cup. You don't get an opportunity to go to the Man Cup very often in your lifetime, and to get an opportunity to go there and have an opportunity to win it is, is a big, big thrill to everybody. Thank you for joining us, and good luck in the rest of the game tonight. Lloyd Thank Robbie, you. General Manager of the Victoria Shamrocks, and uh, we'll go now to second period action with Terry and Dave. Thank you, Don, and for Lloyd Robbie, last year's Executive of the Year, doing a masterful job, as we've mentioned before in the broadcast, placing up to 13 bodies and still having the Man Cup champions in first place. There's our uh, WLA schedule. Next week will be in Maple Ridge at Camille Arena. The same Coquitlam Adnax on the road this time. 
and that'll be our third opportunity this year, Dave, to see those two clubs face each other. And what a big game that's turned out to be. I don't think two or three weeks ago anybody expected this game to be as big as it's going to be. Of course, we've already alluded to the teams being tied as we speak. Maple Bridge playing at this very moment. So come airtime to uh, Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock, we're going to know exactly where these two teams stand. But the worst that's going to happen is one of them is going to be two points ahead of the other cup two tonight. It's going to be a super, super game. All games are at 8 o'clock. Remember that uh, if you're going to go to a game, there's tickets available at the door. There's the National Lacrosse Rankings in Senior A with Brampton rated number one with an 8-0 record. Victoria, the WLA, is 12-4. and uh, Aquas, okay, help me out. Aquasasne. Aquasasne. <laughs> Aquasasne is 6-4. Coquitlam is there as well as Maple Ridge North Shore. The Buffalo Gamblers with Kurt Miloski, Paul Gate, and Kurt's brother Derek Miloski in the lineup. And the rest of the rated in the top ten. I, I hate to be picky, but I'd love to know how Aquasasti at 6-4 and four gets placed ahead of the Adnax at 10-5-1. and one. But what the heck, uh, who's, who's to quibble? But I think uh, we know it's not Osh Week. That's all. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. No fear of them being in the top rankings. But uh, I think uh, one, of the, one of the things there that I guess is a bit of a sticking point between the East and West, the number of games. Of course, the East only plays, uh, I believe it's an 18 game schedule this year, whereas the WLA, of course, playing 25 games. And you've always got to wonder how much that that uh, extra number of games tells on the team that represents the West in the Man Cup. So this second period is underway here with the Coquitlam Adnax leading two to one. They will retreat into the defensive mode and go left to right on your screen. If Victoria in the green going right to left. Victoria in control, here's Alexander. In the left corner for Pratt. Pratt's got coil on him. Pratt able to take a shot, pass it over Alexander instead. Rebound goes to Rusty Kruger after Alec made the save. Kruger coming in two on one with Klein. Klein did not pick up the pass. And the Shamrocks still can't pick it up. Coyle inside to Klein. Long shot attempt or pass by, by Walder. That one goes as straight. It goes all the way back for Elliott. And that's something we saw a lot of in the first period by the Addicts, which maybe led to that poor shooting percentage, was very, very low percentage of passes. Uh, as you say, I think that was supposed to be a pass down the further from Walder. But, uh, you know, when you have to wonder whether it's a pass or a shot, that's an indication that uh, it is a low percentage something. Victoria with control, here's Alexander. For Blackwell to the floor. Blackwell to the left side for Del Halliday. Halliday going against number 10 for Coquitlam, Darren Much. Halliday takes a shot and scores! Del Halliday! Here's goal number 37 for him, and this is a 2-2 tie. And the key to that goal is obviously Del Halliday, but Warren Blackwell. Watch the screen he sets up. Here comes Halliday. Around the screen, he's got three guys, and perfect, perfect timing. Anybody out there watching, any young kids, juniors watching, what perfect timing by Dell Halliday. Got about halfway around that three-man cluster and shot around the screen. Nothing Elliott could do about that. He started to drop, seeing the ball going a bit low, stuck in between his legs. Nothing wrong with Elliott's play on that. Just a great number shot three, by Dell Halliday. The assistant number 10, Jason Kirby. Out of the goal, 109. That's Kirby picking up the only assist on the goal by Halliday at 109 in this 2-2 tie. Victoria has come back from a two-goal deficit to tie it. Go, go, go. On the side here is a good opportunity there for Bride as Bride is all alone in front. Now Blackwell. Blackwell for Victoria. As he put on the offense of attack, and here's Alton Davis. Davis leaves it for Halliday, who's tied this game up. Halliday gets open in front of the net. Oh, Jake's so shot and just wide of the target. Goes in behind the net where it's left there, and it'll be Coquitlam ball. And a nice move by Halliday, and Ogilvy very fortunate not to get called for holding as uh, Halliday had him beaten. Ogilvy put a bit of a grab bomb on referee Mike Everett because he didn't drag him to the floor or uh, let it go. John Wilson across the floor. Here's number 40, Troy Cordenley. Of course, Cordenley played back in the days where the Coquilla Madnax went to the Man Cup. As Courtney scores! Gets free, bounced off of Gordon Reset, and Courtney gets the goal, and Reset's not too happy with himself, but Courtney is. And I'll guarantee you that before this game, the coaching staff of the Adnax said, if you get a chance to go one-on-one -on -one against Gordy Reset, take him one-on-one. -on -one. He hasn't played a lot this year. He's not in the greatest of shape. And a perfect example of it there. Courtney goes one on one set, the set lunging, got himself off balance, and a great goal by uh, Troy Courtney. Out of that circle, for number 40, Troy Courtney. 
The assistant number 13, John Wilson. Accordingly, from Wilson at 2.06. There's a shot taken by Bert Schoem as Victoria comes to the attack. And for Troy Cordley in the standings, that gives him eight goals on the season in just his ninth game of the year. Now Victoria. They have the ball. Here's Alexander. Goes against John Wilson. Wilson, the assistant coach, of, or the associate coach, I should say, with Joe Hiltz of the Westminster Junior Salmon Belt. Shot by Doddridge, a hard one. Goes the length of the floor. Goes all the way back for Marty O'Neill. Doddridge and Trevor Bedell having a bit of a pushing match there. And uh, referee's going to have to keep an eye on things a little bit. Things getting a little bit antsy. I noticed the Shamrocks after that goal by uh, Halliday taking a lot of outside shots on, on Elliott. And Elliott's got to be loving that because if they think they're going to score from outside uh, on every shot, this isn't going to happen. Here's a breakaway chance for Darcy Berchom. He takes a pass from O'Neill. Berchom right in. Good save there by Elliott as Berchom roughing up John Wilson behind the play. And then the ball went quickly to O'Neill and he was able to get him on a breakaway pass. Coquitlam now moves the ball up. Here's Klein. Klein left side for Walder. Takes a shot right on O'Neill and he holds on to it. And that breakaway by Bertone. And almost another one there uh, by Rising. Ties in nicely with again with a game feature on uh, on breakaways. And I'm sure that uh, Bertone wouldn't mind having another crack at that one as Elliott beat him quite easily. Klein. Right side in for Bryden. Here's a chance in front of the net. O'Neill makes the save. He's still looking for the loose ball. And the shot by Dean Richards. Richards. For the right side, here's Bride. Bride back for Richards. Open on his left side is Rope. Goes for Rope. It bounces off of Mitchell into the corner. Mitchell still with it with 12 on the shot clock. 3 twos the score. Coquitlam leads it. They led 2 0 at one point, 2 1 after one. Del Halliday quickly tied it up in this second period. And now it's Troy Cordley that's put Coquitlam out in front in that 3 to 2 lead in our Pro Joy Lacrosse game of the week here from the Coquitlam Sports Center. And there's a crease violation called against Victoria's number 18. That's Scott Fair, the Nanaimo Timberman. And that was vintage Brian Nicola there, just putting his shoulder down, going one on one, and ended up getting a pretty good shot against, uh, against Elliott. I should say former Nanaimo Timberman. Timberman is Fair now up with the big club. Now, accordingly, on the left side, has control of the ball, takes a shot, and O'Neill holds onto it. And the ball is caught in his knee pad, and referee gives him a break, and here comes Kisslinger. He moved it up. Now for Alexander. On the left side, we've played four minutes and 50 seconds of this second period, and a 3 2 go put him lead. Del Halliday spins off a of player, takes a shot right on as Elliott. No problem with that one. Yeah, that time uh, Holiday went a little bit too far. If he shot that a split second earlier, perhaps he could have got Elliott leaning to his left and uh, got it back short side on him, but a little bit too late on the release. Callan with a good burst of energy takes that shot from behind his back. And a wrap around, and it was right on O'Neill. And here's Alexander. Bounce pass off on the floor. Here's Fair, a shot right on. That was Rob Dawson testing the goaltender. Dawson with all by himself on the side of the line, they score! That was in Dawson, I'm not getting my numbers all mixed up. That's Jason Kirby getting that goal in a 3-3 tie. Here's Halliday up top of the pass. He's looking down, and I think, I think Halliday, it took him so long to get the pass over there, he was so surprised that Kirby was that wide open, he probably couldn't believe it. But somebody, somebody messed up big time on the Coquitlam defense. There's no way in the world that anybody should be left that wide open. Score by number 10, time. Jason Kirby. The assistant number three, Del Holiday, time of the goal, 534. Holiday picks up the only assist at 534, and the goal by Kirby is third on the season, and we are tied again at three. Here's Bride. Bride goes one on one on Dodgers, gets out in front of the net. Bride takes a shot, scores! There's a goal that Chris Bride deserved to get. Goal pass the goaltender O'Neill, and it does so. A nice little backhand shot by Bride, but the key there was challenging the defensive player, going one-on-one. -on -one. Here we see him going one-on-one -on -one against Doddridge. Doddridge tries to get the stick out, and a nice, almost one-handed bounce shot there by uh, Bride. I bet you, he'd probably never tell you this, but I would guarantee he had no idea where that shot was going. And the thing with a shot like that is, 
Neither does Marty O'Neill. Uh, Nine four score scoreman number down. seven. Chris Bride, the assistant number 40. Troy Courtney at number 35, the goaltender, Dallas Elliott. Down to the goal, 549. Ogilvy takes a shot, gets his own rebound in front of the net. Takes a shot, goes right into the stick of Steve Kissinger. He's going to have that one taken out of his stick by Colby Rope. Instead, holds on to it. Ogilvy takes a slash at Kisslinger, and now it's Neil Dodger with 20 on the shot clock and victory to the offense. Another example there of very good scouting and coaching by the Adnax. They realize that Steve Kisslinger, not a real strong ball handler, so of course Ogilvy and Rope both pressing him up the floor, trying to get that turnover deep in the Victoria end. Of course, it didn't happen, but good, uh, good strategy by the coaching staff of the Adnax. Minor interference called against Coquitlam. It'll be Victoria's ball. They trail four to three. Twice they've tied the game up in the second period of play, and twice Coquitlam has regained that lead. 13 minutes, 15 seconds to go in this second period. Here's Kirby. Kirby scores, and he again ties the game up. Jason Kirby, a second straight goal. And all of a sudden, Jason Kirby's become a scoring machine. A great bounce shot by Jason Kirby. Nothing once again Elliot could do with that. You'll see Kirby, great one-on-one -on -one move around Mitchell. Just bounces it. He's got his stick right up high on his shoulder where it should be. A sharp bounce shot got up under the glove of Dallas Elliott. Or pardon me, or, and uh, up into that top corner. And we get set to face off in this 4-4 tie now as victorious Kirby has tied things up. Jason Kirby, the assistant number three, Dell Holiday, and number 16, Darcy Boutin. There's a great chance there for Tyson Lyons coming out of the box. Now breakaway chance for Troy Cortley as he takes the pass from Wilson, and O'Neill holds that one up. As Dave Evans gets clubbed over the head by one of our lights that just fell from the rafters, and he's okay, but the play continues. The first chum goes in, and, and I thought we were going to have our first penalty of the game, but that one goes in. And Elliott makes a nice save. The ball is loose. Waiting there, it doesn't come out of the crease. Waiting there was Bert Young as he couldn't pick it up. You're all right, Dave. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna survive. The sky is falling, the sky is falling, said Chicken Little. And Jason Kirby, you know, with that second goal, I was just checking the stats. How many times did you see somebody double his goal scoring total in one period or in the course of a couple of minutes? That's what Jason Kirby just did. And I just jinxed the no-hitter that the referees had going because there's a penalty on the play and it's going against Darcy Bertone. He's going to the penalty box. Berthio makes his way to the box and the first power play opportunity of the night will go for Coquitlam. In this 4-4 tie here in the Pro Joy Lacrosse Game of the Week with 12.06 to go in the second period. Now we'll get a look at the penalty. Just... Now we missed it. <laughs> The Carthome, the holding penalty, pulls the Adnack player down. Now, those are the kind of penalties that coaches hate. When you take a penalty deep in the opposition end, uh, those are the ones that you've got lots of time to get back, get set up properly. Coaches just hate those penalties. And a face off to the right of the goaltender, Marty O'Neill. As we await the face off, and it's Blair Mitchell, the face off for Coquitlam and Warren Blackwell for Victoria. Now Warren Blackwell decides to fix his shoe. This is going to be first. Midway through the game and we're seeing our first penalty. And uh, that's the way I like it, to be quite honest with you. The less penalties, the better. But uh, we're going to get a chance to look at the ad in that car play. And we're going to get a chance to look at John Wilson in that shooter spot where he can be so dangerous. And it starts with brunch out of the lineup uh, with work commitments. A great chance for Wilson to get into the groove on the power play. And that one will go against Coquitlam. They'll get called with minor interference. So some penalty killing time. The penalty killers, led by Neil Dodgers, Warren Blackwell, number 12. And now we have another penalty. It's going to go against Coquitlam, but I can't figure out. Victoria had the ball, so why does it go against Coquitlam? Well, I guess the penalty, the penalty took place before the play actually had started. And I'm not sure exactly what the penalty was. I didn't see the signal from referee Mike Everett. There was some pushing and shoving going on. Uh, and it looked like he signaled a tripping call, but uh, it could have been... I don't know what it could have been. Well, the trip happened down in the Coquitlam end. Now, Victoria had the ball. There's no way that the whistle should have blown. Yeah, well, I think I think because, because the penalty took place before the whistle had blown, then Victoria retains possession. But either way, 
A real stupid penalty by Blair Mitchell. I'm sure he's going to hear about that. And don't be shocked if we see his playing time cut down a little bit after taking a penalty like that. So that power play goes for not. Coquitlam goes 0 for 1 in their big 9 second power play. Now Del Halliday. Halliday in a 5 on 5 situation. Takes a quick shot. Elliott kind of looks up to the sky and is as into, I hope it's below me. Yeah, and once again, Del Halliday showing why he's developed into such a great offense or such a great goal scorer. Super timing coming around that screen. And it's one of the advantages of not being that big. Halliday, not a big man, but it makes it easy for him to almost hide behind the defensive player and get that screen shot away. There's a couple of nice plays in lacrosse and a third behind the back shot there as Wilson took a behind the back pass from Walder. His shot was right on and O'Neill made the save. And then Bob Klein or Bill Callen came in and did the same thing. And O'Neill again was equal to the task. 10.45 to go in the second period, a 4-4 tie from the Coquitlam Sports Center at WLA on Rogers Community Television. You're watching the Coquitlam Adnax and the Victoria Shamrocks, the Man Cup champions from 1997. Fight it out here in WLA action. And once again, we saw Brian Nicola loves to challenge one-on-one. -on -one. one of the knocks on Nicola, of course, when he played with Burnaby, is that once he gets kind of tied up in that one-on-one -on -one confrontation, he's not uh, big on moving the ball. Walder took a shot. Kruger now the rebound in front of the net for Callan. And Victoria grabs that loose ball. Here's Del Halliday, who's got one goal and one, two helpers thus far in this ballgame. 10.05 to go. Birch home out of the penalty box. A quick five-second power play is all that's left in it as Victoria might get an opportunity to shoot. It'll be Blackwell as Birch home now. Mitchell's back to the floor, so both teams at even strength. Right side, that shot taken by Nicola. The big rebound is there. Berthiome goes after it. And the shot clock runs down to zero. It'll be Coquitlam all. And a lucky, lucky break for Victoria there as Nicola took that wide shot, followed his shot in, left the, uh, left the Adnick player wide open. A lucky break that the turnover came on the whistle, not on a, uh, not on a loose ball possession by the uh, Adnicks. The, the captain, Chris Pratt, takes his shot, goes off the back of Pat Coyle. Coyle in for one of the two players in the league without a face mask. Coyle and the other player in the lineup tonight is Tyson Lyons. And Colby Rope with the ball, looks for a man in front, that's Coyle, break his scores! Pat Coyle! The cutter for the front of the net, it was Pat Coyle, and Colby Rope spotted him, and we got a 5-4 Coquitlam lead again. Well, once again, the key there is look where Colby Rope is. Right down, almost even with the goal line. Look at the great cutting angle that Pat Coyle's got. Doesn't have to adjust his body position. Catches the pass, lets it go, and bangs it. And that's the kind of fundamental look. I was just going to say earlier, Terry, that if I'm in Les Windrow's shoes in the Adnex bench, I'm going to tell my team, forget about all the fancy backhand passes, the backhand shots. We have a little string there, three or four uh, backhand passes, needless backhand shots in a row get back to basics, and that was basics at its very best. Well, of course, this year is the Minto Cup out west. Last year was in Whitby, where the Whitby Warriors defeated the Burnaby Lakers, but this year the Burnaby Lakers got a big opportunity waiting for them. to a BC city near you, and I've heard a couple of locations booked. Victoria and Burnaby Gold Copeland Arena, and I can guarantee it'll be one of these five teams in the final. Maybe Co Port Coquitlam, don't count them out either. But look at that Burnaby record, 15-0, and really they haven't really even been challenged. Uh, they played Port Coquitlam, the second place team in the league just last week, beat them, I believe the score was 16-3. Uh, obviously, Burnaby totally dominating the league, and uh, uh, you, you hate to go out in a limb, especially based the way, based on the, uh, the playoffs of last year in the junior when uh, we're going to add next upset. 
Buffalo Saints. But I really think it's going to be awfully, awfully tough. Unless Burnaby runs into a, a real rash of injuries or something, or gets grossly overconfident, boy, it's going to be tough to knock them off in the West. There you see Les Wingrove talking to his troops during a timeout and a 5-4 lead for his squad over this guy, Hermel Dillon, and the Victoria Shamrock. Well, you just go to number 44, Colby Rope, and number 77, Bill Callan. There's the announcement. Rope his, or Coyle, his fourth on the season from Rope and Callan at 10:48. We have 8.55 to go in this second period, a 5-4 lead in favor of the Coquilla Mad Max in this pro joy lacrosse game of the week. Quickly, Coquillum come out as Tyson Elias sends a high stick up high, and the fans want a penalty there against A.J. Smith, or against Elias for hitting A.J. Smith. Shot, ooh, just missed the bottom left corner as Chris Bride let that one go. Bride with the goal already. Now Ogilvy takes that shot, that's blocked in front of the net. Elias goes after the loose ball. Instead, here's Dean Richards. Richards back in the lineup, his first game here tonight. Takes a shot right on O'Neill. And he'll leave it there for Neil Doddridge. Doddridge will bring it out with eight minutes and 10 seconds to go as he'll go off for a change and giving the ball to Bruce Alexander. Alexander has Alton Davis in the left corner. He holds on to it. Still looks for someone to pass to. Goes off to the right for Brian Nickel. Nickel right in, takes a shot. Elliott to save. And Dallas Elliott grabs that loose ball. Going to go against Coquitlam, leaving the Victoria ball. Alexander the shot. That one off the target. Now Coquitlam will get the ball. And not a smart shot by Bruce Alexander. A brand new 30 second clock. And he flogs one from way outside. Uh, uh, you know, if they had scored three or four goals and I like from outside, maybe that's justifiable. But they really only get the one. And it was a great shot that we talked about by, uh, by Dale Halliday. John Wilson. Spins up a man and it'll be minor interference against Coquillum's Troy Cordland. As he's all tied up as he cross-checked Chris Pratt to the floor. Yeah, the, the perfect moving pick there as Cordland came in and just blocked him just out of the way and uh, allowed John Wilson to walk in all alone. Good call by the official to bring that ball down. now Blackwell's, he's fixing his shoes over there. No, he's not doing the two-step. He's not break dancing. He's got some water on his shoes. Or perhaps he was just stepping on some bleach. And now here's Blackwell behind the net. In front of the net. And there's a good opportunity there for Fair as he let that shot go. And the rebound goes into the left corner. And out of play, it'll be Coquitlam cool ball. And Dawson had a wide open net. Elliott sliding across. And he bounced it about, uh, can you bounce it 40 feet over the net in here? I guess screws high enough. But uh, there you saw the bounce shot way, way, way over the net. And uh, that's a case probably of his stick uh, hooking. And what that means is the ball gets caught up in the, uh, the top end of the stick and just goes straight down instead of uh, out on a nice smooth arc. You mentioned the players rubbing bleach on their shoes. I don't know if they still use bleach, but some of the teams use bleach for the bottom of the shoes. It makes them stick to the floor a little bit better. Quillam score is quite slippery on this surface here at the Sports Center. It used to be, he used to use rosin years ago, but nobody allows to use rosin anymore. So yeah, bleach is a good one. Another one that some teams lose, believe it or not, is, uh, is cola. There's a great three-way passing play as Klein lets the pass go and right on the goal tinder. Here's the Tyson Lyons. He's got control, going one-on-one. -on -one. Lyons gets open, takes a shot. Good save there by Elliott. It'll be a short delay while Bill Callan picks up his jock strap. But Tyson Lyons just walked around in one-on-one. Good. Bounce pass in for Klein. Klein has a man open in front. Callan scores! Bill Callan takes the pass from Klein and Coyle, and this is a 6-4 lead in favor of Kukwila. And boy, talk about making up for an error at the other end by coming right back, and what a great shot by Cowan. There's the pass from Klein, and watch this shot go short side. No fooling around, nothing fancy, just drilled a short side on Marty O'Neill. And that's really the ticket on O'Neill. Don't get too close on him, he's big, he throws a lot of the net, just pick his spot, 10 or 12 feet outside the crease, and bury it. Cowan picks up his 20, Third goal on the season. Boy, if there's a comeback player of the year this year, it's going to be Bill Cowan. You know, last year we talked about how he came into camp, not in very good physical shape, didn't have a very good year. But boy, as he picked it up this year. Uh, this is year. Goal, score number 77, Bill Cowan. The assist to number 41, 
Bob Klein, time for the goal, 14 12. I don't know how Coyle doesn't pick up an assist there because Coyle put it up for Klein and Klein threw it in front. Nonetheless, we do see it a little bit easier up here. We have the replay. Five minutes, 20 seconds to go in this second period. A 6-4 lead in favor of the Coquitlam Madnax. Alexander gets behind Brian. He's going to go to the penalty box and that went right into the stick of Dallas Elliott and a power play opportunity coming up for Victoria. It becomes the penalty here. An obvious hold by Chris Bride. Maybe we're finally going to see a power play. We saw one, of course, earlier, but it only lasted seven seconds before uh, before the Adnacks took a penalty in that case and uh, negated it. You know, we talked about some of the, uh, the players going to the World Cup. Well, one of the things the World Cup features this year is a B division. Teams like Scotland, Wales, Germany has a team, Japan has a team. And uh, why I bring that up is that Neil Doddridge apparently is going to go and play for Scotland. Now, I'm not sure exactly what the, uh, the connection is. But I think it's one of those situations where as long as you, long as you uh, once ate a shortbread cookie, you're considered multiple play for Scotland. But, uh, but I believe uh, somebody in Dodgers uh, is in Scottish Is that why he wore a kilt to today's game? That's probably why it is. That's probably exactly why it is. 4.50 left in the second period in the 6-4 lane. There's the power play unit on the floor. Going to work at Dallas Elliott. Had that one go up the post and behind the net. They battle for the loose ball, and it's Pat Coyle bringing it into the crease, and Victoria wants that one to go in their favor. That was an odd one because Elliott definitely pulled it back in, but he had his own player stick on the ball, and uh, I think Mike Everett made the right call by not calling it the back in. All in front is Walters! No goal! They're going to call the crease violation on Jason Walder. Nonetheless, gravity took over for him. Exactly. Just his own, his own momentum carried him into the crease, but you know, as I said earlier on Marty O'Neill, Walder certainly did fake him out at that time, but he was uh, well in the crease by the time he did it. I think on O'Neill, the ticket is shoot the ball, don't get fancy. Alexander lost control of that one, and that'll go against Bruce Alexander as Coquitlam will now get possession, and they will kill with 1.03 left in the penalty, 4.15 to go in the second period, 6-4 Coquitlam. Callan. Got two goals today and has the sixth goal for Coquillum in the second period, a 6 4 lead. Looking to kill some time and doing so is John Wilson. Left side for Callan. Callan back for Wilson with 40 seconds left in the penalty. Coquillum can kill as much time as they want without a 30 second shot clock running while they're short handed. And they're attempting to do that. And there's Rusty Kruger behind the net. Sidesteps a check by Kirby. Still with it. Wilson can't pick up a pass. And here comes the power play back to work with Neil Dodgers. Dodgers to Nicola out of the bench. Nicola right in a goal shot right on. And Elliott makes the save. Back the other direction is Bill Callan. Callan for Coquilla. Onto the floor is Cordley. He gets the ball in front of the net for Rusty Kruger. Shot right on. Good save there. Rebound for Callan. And the goaltender O'Neill still standing up tall for Victoria playing well. Yeah, big save by O'Neill. It's a great ball move by the Addicts. And of course, prior to that, we saw Nicola in alone on Elliott. And you wonder why Elliott's having uh, pretty good success against Nicola. Of course, they were teammates for many years in Burnaby. And I'm sure Elliott knows Nicola's shooting habits uh, inside out and backwards. Two minutes, 55 seconds to go in this second period. 6-4, Coquilla. Penalty over with. In front of the net. Good chance for Brad Downey as that one went off the target. Downey tries to go get it. And Downey's hammered into the fourth there by Steve Kisslinger, and Downey goes down hard. Kisslinger puts his arms up in the air. So does Johnny Wilson for Coquitlam. They want a call, and now Downey has a couple of words with Kissinger. There's the hit. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. It, it looked like Kissinger eased up a little bit, but still, it was after the whistle had blown. I think you've got to call that. I think one of the problems the referees have in calling something like that is they're pretty much instructed to call that a major, cut and dry five-minute penalty. And certainly that wasn't worth a major. I think, if anything, Kissinger eased up on him a little bit and uh, Downey took a little bit of a dive. But still, I think there's got to be something called in a case like that. And someone has taken a timeout is possibly Coquillum. And maybe Les Wingrove doesn't want to see his squad take a dumb, foolish penalty. As Andy Ogilvy went over and had a chat with Steve Kisslinger. So this will be interesting as you look at Kisslinger with a smile on his face, looking like he's having some fun out there as Victoria takes his time off. You know, it's really ironic. This is something I just I just noticed, and I don't know what made me notice it, but 
There are very, very few wooden sticks, of course, being used in the Western Cross Association. Just about everybody's using uh, using the plastic field across type of stick. And yet, ironically enough, Steve Kesslinger, I think, is one of only two or three guys in the game tonight using a wooden stick. And here's a guy that's never played box across in Canada in his life. So something something fishy in there, but... Uh, tradition for him, probably. Yeah, he's, he's instant tradition for Steve Kesslinger. Well, we're going to look at some category leaders. As you'll see on your screen, in week eight, Del Halliday has mentioned 36 goals. He's got two tonight or one tonight. Uh, Kevin Stewartson in assists. He's just one point behind. Todd Katanchuk for the league lead. There's Todd Katanchuk. He has the lead with 60 points. Penalty minutes. Chris Hackle in front with 80 points. Now with the North Shore Indians and Marty O'Neill with the state percentage at 82.55%. And Dell Halliday with three points tonight. He takes over that point scoring lead from Todd Katanchuk. He's now got uh, 61 points. So, uh, based on tonight's game, Dell Howdy now leading the league both in goals and points. Andy Ogilvy took a pass there from Coyle. Ogilvy still with the ball. In front for Coyle, he can't initiate that pass. Goes into the left corner, here's Jason Walder. He's got Alton Davis on him. Walder unable to pick up the loose ball. Phil Callen does so. Callen with two goals this period. Right side, Kruger, shot just over the top left corner. Now for Klein. Klein over for Coyle. Coyle in front of the net. Good chance for Callum for three. Great save there in front of the net by Marty O'Neill as Callum all by himself had the opportunity to test O'Neill. Man, oh man, one of these guys going to learn shoot the ball on Marty O'Neill. Forget the face. Now Coquillum with possession. 140 to go in this second period in a 6-4 lead for them. And of course, in our second period intermission, you'll see our player profile as promised in that first period. Del Halliday will be that, of course, our second period highlights and summary. Now Colby Rowe. I talked to Dal Halliday briefly before the game. More about the field across championship coming up, but he is really, really excited about that. The opportunity to play for your country in, in such a high profile event. He's really thrilled about that. Of course, we wish the, uh, the Canadian team the best of luck. And here's Gordon Reset back on the floor, and he takes a high stick and penalty. He'll go to the penalty box, and that'll give Coquillum their second opportunity on the power play tonight. And those are the kind of calls the referees like. Wind up plump over the head. And uh, I think that is a case there of not so much the lack of conditioning by Gordy Reset, just a lack of timing. I mean, he's trying to go for the stick, and uh, I'm afraid he wasn't even close. Well, Dylan's a little concerned as he sees his power play in, or his penalty killers out on the floor now. The Mitchell against Blackwell again on the faceoff. This time won by Coquitlam. So, power play number two for Coquitlam. They're 0 for 1. Wilson. He's at the right tuner position, replacing Kevin Brunt. Take a shot off the bar. And that'll give a new 30 to Coquitlam when they go back for it with 50 seconds, 5-0 left in the second period. And the power play to work for Coquitlam in the 6-4 lead. What a great shot by Johnny Wilson. Pulling that ball back, short side, off the crossbar over Marty O'Neill's right or left shoulder. And uh, if that's any indication, Johnny O'Neill's shooting is uh, starting to round in the fork. What a great shot. Now Alton Davis with some speed to center. Puts the ball on the right side. Brian Nicola pulls onto it. Looking to kill some time. They look to kill the last 19 seconds of this second period. And 105 to go in the penalty. Tyson Elias with 13 left in the period. Period clock down to five. Tyson Elias takes one last shot. A good one, Rayon Elliott. Quickly, three seconds on the short for Troy Cordenley, and he will not even attempt a shot as Coquitlam's happy to go to the dressing room with that two-goal lead. They later 6-4. A pretty good period. I think a much more entertaining period than the first period, only because it was a little more, uh, a little less sloppy than the first period was. Much better execution, some nice goals, some good goaltending, excellent game so far, and uh, as we said before the game, a huge, huge, huge game for Coquitlam Adnax if they want any hope of uh, finishing first. Coquitlam led 2-1 after one. They outscore Victoria 4-3 in the second period. That uh, equates to that two-goal lead. Now let's go down to Don Bensmiller. Thank you very much, Don. As you look at some of our patrons here tonight, not a bad crowd, not a great crowd, but not a bad crowd. And there is our game next week, right here on Rogers Community Television. The lacrosse game of the week continues with Coquitlam visiting Cam Neely Arena to face the Berards. And uh, once again, what a huge game that's going to be for both of those teams. Uh, you know, if, if this game continues the way it has and Coquitlam does come out of here with a victory, of course, it's going to bring them closer to uh, the Victoria Shamrocks. And uh, 
that game on Tuesday night that we're going to show next week is uh, it's just going to be a huge game, not just for second place, but perhaps even for that uh, that battle for first place. Because as Lloyd Robbie alluded to when he spoke with Don between periods, they're going to lose a lot of guys. It's only going to be for three games, but they're going to lose a lot of guys um, for the World Cup. And uh, that game itself, it said on the screen there July 5th, but a reminder that is wrong. It should be July 12th. That's one week today on Rogers Community Television. A 3 p.m. start, and if you missed that, it repeats at 10 p.m. at night right here on Rogers Community Television, Channel 4. And third period action, 20 minutes up on the clock, 6-4 lead for Kulkulam, and a 49-second power play still in effect for the Adnacks as we begin this third period. And the Adnacks once again doing a really good job with face-off. They haven't dominated the face-off circle, but they've won over 50%, and that's a very key thing for them against any team, for any team playing against the Shamrocks. Wilson, Kruger. Far side for Cordenley, back to Kruger. I don't know how he's going to pick that one off. That was a hard pass from Cordenley. Battle behind the net for the ball. Alton Davis is going to get called for minor interference. It'll be Coquitlam ball with 24 seconds left in the penalty. Yeah, once again, Cordenley forcing that, trying to force that pass through to Kruger when Alton Davis had him well tied up. And uh, that's where Cordenley's got to take, uh, take the easy way out, perhaps, and just get it back out to Walder. Kruger. Top for Walter. Walter the shot off the target, able to get his own rebound. 15 on the shot clock. Kruger misses that one time attempt. Now Darren Reisig. Reisig, you don't hear his name much, but you can believe me, he's on the floor. Yeah, Reisig, one of the best all round athletes in the league, and somebody who's who's taken it upon himself. And he seems to do this every year. Change, he said almost changes his role on his own, uh, depending on the rest of the makeup of the team. And I was going to say, he is a very underrated offensive player. That's why a great bounce shot on the run. Darren Reisig gets the victorious Shamrocks within one. And where is he? He gets the ball, it goes down, and gets a big goal. It wasn't shorthanded. The penalty was just over with. But Reisig gets the goal, a big one. It gets his club within one at 6-5. Yeah, nice bounce shot by Reisig, cutting across on the move. Perhaps one I think Elliott should have had. It was well out of the uh, prime shooting area. But still, uh, the quick release by Reisig, nice bounce shot. An unassisted goal by Darren Reisig at one minute and two seconds of play. So the Coquitlam Adnax lead now is just by one. They lead it six to five. Reisig picks up his 19th goal on the season. So off to a pretty good start this year with 19 goals. Here to break by Troy Cordenley. Right in. Shot just over top of the right top corner as Cordenley was sent in all alone. One minute, 30 seconds played in this third period. A 6-5 Coquitlam Adnac lead. We talked about World Cup field lacrosse. All the broadcasts are going to be live on ESPN starting Sunday, July 19th versus Australia for Canada. July 20th versus the USA. And check your satellite and local listing. There's a breakaway attempt for John Wilson as he missed that one. That one goes off the goaltender and out of play. And those are the ones that Johnny Wilson's got to start burying pretty soon. As I mentioned before the game, the honeymoon, if it's not over, it's getting down to the last. They're packing their bags and heading home from that honeymoon because he's got to start burying those for the Adnax to really become the, uh, the dominant team they want to be. Now here's Victoria with control. Reisig left it there with the ball, number 12. Here's Brian Nicola. Nicola getting hammered all over the floor out there. Finally lost control of it. Goes back and it'll be a new shot clock but with, with Coquitlam in possession. Now it's going to be interesting to see how Brian Nicola fits in with this Victoria team as time goes on. As I mentioned, only his first game tonight, but we've seen on a number of occasions, he loves to pack the ball, and he's not always the best at jumping it off when he gets double and triple team. That's definitely really fit into the Victoria style of uh, the lots of ball movement, lots of team play. Aired pass. Coyle now with the ball for Coquitlam. That one goes to the front. Now it's that side for Rusty Kruger. Great pass by Jason Walter, finding Rusty Kruger out to the side. And Marty O'Neill comes up with a big save. Yeah, that's a case where Walter, the only pass he had was that backhand pass. That's the time you take it. What a great pass it was. Blackwell in for fair. Out front for Dell Halliday. It's good. Three points tonight. Nice pass over for fair. And he missed that one off to the right side. Parked at the crease. Now that, could been, that could have been the tying goal right there. Is that goal post? They had a Dallas Elliott that time. Fair. 
as Torrey said that Jason Waller went through the crease, but I think he was assisted in his approach through the crease. Three minutes, 30 seconds gone in this third period of play, a 6-5 Coquitlam lead. They led 6-4 after two. And Darren Ragazig has got the only goal thus far in this third period, that for Victoria. Darcy Berthion falls along the boards. Ball coming up is Chris Bry. Bry falls to the floor, attempts to pass the ball. Andy Ogilvy, that one goes out of play. It'll be Victoria ball. That was a tough break for Bry because he wasn't really an awful lot from that position flat on his butt. That he, could, uh, that he could do with that ball. Uh, he couldn't really try and dump it back to Elliott for fear of being having it picked off. And actually, I think about one out of bounds, not a bad play. And on the floor, Darcy Berthion being checked there. And doing the checking is Darren Mutt. Much with the ball. Goes right in, takes a shot off the target, and goes out of play. It'll be Victoria's turn now to come up the floor on offense. Four minutes and 13 seconds gone in this third period. Six to five lead in favor of the Coquitlam Adnax here, trying to get within three points of the first place Victoria Shamrocks. Shamrocks with 26 points. The Coquitlam Adnax tied for second with Maple Ridge with 21 points each. And just one point back of them, if I'm not mistaken, is the three points back is the North Shore Indians. And a delayed penalty coming up on the play as a player down on the floor, I believe that's Dean Richards holding his right knee. And here comes the penalty. Right there, as Dean Richards will go to the penalty box. Yeah, Richards puts the big, uh, the big hog tie on the Victoria player, drag him down to the floor, and it looks like he hurt himself. It looks like I cut his knee at first, but it looks like apparently his ankle that he hurt. Uh, of course, we're talking about Maple Ridge. They're playing right now out in Abbotsford. Uh, they're playing a home game in Abbotsford tonight against the newest Mr. Salmon Valley. And uh, why are they playing in Abbotsford? I think it's a good idea. Uh, Abbotsford requested a game out there. They always draw very well when they play exhibition games. Maple Ridge Arena, I assume, is, uh, is being used for something else. Here we see the penalty coming up again. And there you see, yeah, Richard's ankle twisted under his body as he goes down, his left ankle. Savoring it a little bit as he goes off, but I think you're going to see him come back as soon as his penalty's up. Our category leaders as far as top scorers go, I'm sure you'll see Todd Katanchuk out in front. There he is real tight this year. Todd Katanchuk with 60 points. Kevin Stewartson with 59. Dell Halliday with 58. Garrett French having a super year. Chris Knopfler, another Maple Ridge Burrard having a great year. And I know who's number six. And that's Chris Gill, another Burrard who started slowly this year with goals. But you see him creeping up now as second in the league with 31 goals now and 51 points. There you see Walter Pratt, Patterson, and Stevenson, who's another player who's got himself in good shape. Yeah, and of course, uh, those, those uh, stats before tonight's game, and Chris Pratt, or Chris Pratt, uh, Dell Halliday with his goal and two assists tonight, he's now moved ahead of Todd Katanchuk. And as you said, a very, very tight race for that scoring championship, and a race involving guys who normally aren't up there competing. Stewart's and Katanchuk, Halliday, certainly not uh, common names in the top of the scoring race. Yeah, they're all, all players, if you basically look at the top six, all players having career years. Darren French and uh, Chris Gill, well, he's always there, but uh, Chris Kanopoulos, yeah. who came off of a car accident at the beginning of the year, so he's, he's come off a good start. Got off to a good start. Anyways, here on the right side is John Wilson. They are on the power play, the Adnex. They're checked out, they're shorthanded. As it looked like they had the power play unit out there for a second, but I see Andy Ogilvy out there to kill some time. Brad Downey out to help out this man, that's Troy Cordenly. Twisting and turning, Cordenly stops and holds on to the ball. Now loses control, and oh, almost on a breakaway is Neil Doddridge. He can send it ahead for Kisslinger, and he does so. Kisslinger on a breakaway to tie it. Good save by Elliott. Doddridge, the rebound, holds on to it. They'll get a new 30 out of the deal, and a power play with 55 seconds remaining in that power play. And Steve Kissinger with that wooden stick of his, and probably, if he had a plastic stick, who knows, it might have been different. But what we saw prior to the breakaway, of course, was a great defensive move by Kissinger, that wrap check, that stick check, and so probably good for us. Of course, that is Kissinger's background. Grab the door! Hard shot by Alexander, went off the goal post all the way down the floor. Alexander got it back from the goaltender O'Neill, and here's the power play to work with a new clock. Dawson to Alexander, left side for Pratt. Del Halliday waits at the left side. Again, Alexander takes a shot off the 
target. They don't get a new shot clock. Nine on the shot clock in front of the net for Pratt. Pratt behind the net now. They did get a new shot clock. It's down to 25 now. Slow and resetting. Alexander now. Here's Klein. Klein trying to break that loose ball free. And here's Dawson now for Pratt. And we have a play stoppage, and I'm sure they're going to check that 30-second clock. Well, Victoria's bench yelling for the reset, and I think they had a legitimate argument because that shot of uh, that shot of Alexander's, you could hear it even up here, tick off the glove of Dallas Elliott. Clearly, the shot clock should have been reset, and uh, they're, they're back to normal now. 20 seconds left on the clock, and Victoria in possession. 13 minutes, 20 seconds left in this third period. Penalty now over with. Dean Richards back to the floor. Doesn't look like he's favoring his ankle too much. He's testing it, though, but I'm sure he's in a bit of a pain. So we'll wait to see if Dean Richards is able to return. Chris Bride. Bride with Rob Dawson all over him. Bride able to get away from Dawson. Bride right in on goal around Alexander. Oh, not drawing a penalty. I thought the hold was on it. The referee's arm went up for the new shark clock as that one went on the goal. Bride now in the slot. Bride looks for someone to pass to. Holds on to it. Gives it to Troy Cordley. Cordley looks. Holds on to it. Takes a couple of wraps from Rising. Cordley in front. Mitchell bounce pass or bounce shot. Misses, goes behind into the right corner now. Here's Victoria with 12.30 to go in this third period. The pro Joy Lacrosse game of the week from the Coquitlam Sports Center. I'm Terry Murray with Dave Evans, Don Benz Miller, Jim Reese, Dave Dick, and the rest of our Rogers Community Television sports crew bringing you this WLA game of the week involving the Victoria Shamrocks who are down by one goal, 6-5 to five to the Coquitlam Adnax. And a good call there by the referee as the, uh, the Victoria player down on his knees. Uh, but uh, definitely moving interference against Bill Cowan. And Bill Cowan having a great game tonight for the Adnax. Uh, he's got a couple of goals, played very well defensively, and he's got big goals at key time. Here he is, Downey. Has the ball. Nice pass in front of that. Oh, and boom! Down and hard hitting the floor. Who I believe was number 27, Zap. And Casey Zapp gets up as if nothing had happened, but that was a hard check. Warren Blackwell tried to get that pass. Dallas Elliott out of his net, leaves it for Brad Downey. What a check on Casey Zapp. Yeah, Zapp paid the price for that one, and uh, he may be having a chat with whoever threw him the pass because uh, that's what's known as a suicide pass. And boy, did he get it. Tyson Lyons comes around, tries to get the ball away from Cordenley. Cordenley puts it to the right. Bob Klein in for Coy. Coyle holds on to him. Nice pass, now shot clock runs down to zero. With 11.15 to go in this third period, a 6-5 Coquitlam Adenac lead. And the Adenac still, I think, trying to be a little bit too fancy. The backhand pass where it isn't necessary, maybe one or two extra passes. You'd like to see ball movement, of course, but you've got to strike that compromise behind between lots of ball movement and not risking uh, low percentage passes. Darren Reichsings, who's got the fifth goal for Victoria, Sends a pass in front for Dodgers. That one goes back into the stick. Dodgers scores! Neil Dodgers takes the pass out of the corner from Del Halliday. Halliday gets his fourth point tonight, and this game is tied at six. And Dodgers left the room in front of that empty uh, in front of that net. Here's the pass from Halliday, but we'll see Dodgers right there with the defensive player. Uh, had backed off him way, way, way too far. And there's a case of ball watching. The Quillam defender turned, watching the ball in the corner. By the time he turned to get back set on daughter, he was just too far off. And it's back in the game. Victoria ties the game up at 6 all. Rising had made the pass to Holiday, but he will not get the second assist. What the heck will give it to him anyways? It's Halliday and Rysik from Dodgers. Dodgers is 15 goal in the air. Here's a good chance in front of the net. As Chris Bride was able to walk in all alone in front, Victoria has yet to get a lead in this lacrosse game today. They trail 2-1 after one, 6-4 after two. Have twice, three times, four times battled back, and here they are at six all. Yeah, and I think if there is such a thing as momentum or such a, 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 a giant factor as momentum as someone is uh, very often given credit for, it's certainly in Victoria's, uh, Victoria's favor now. Coquitlam with the ball. Long pass out of the box as John Wilson gets hammered from behind. And Wilson down on the floor will get up and get possession. 
as Coquitlam will be in possession with that ball, 9.49 to go in this third period in this 6-6 tie. And not a smart play by Rob Dawson. Uh, the ball had long since passed and got into the corner when he nailed Wilson from behind. Now the set's on the floor again. Are they going to try an ice set on this set? Let's see. Set on the left side, guarding Troy Cordley. Ball on the right side is Wilson. Puts it over to Cordley on the set side. And here's Troy Cordley. Goes one on one, goes to the left side. Back pass in front of the net. Good opportunity for Zap. Now behind for Cordley. The crease violation is going to go away against Coquitlam. And Victoria goes on offense. And as we expected, they set up Troy Cordley against Gordy Reset. Cordley beat Reset, but the Victoria player helped out. Reset, or of course, Cordley dished the ball off, but nothing came of it. Ball for Scott Fair. He can't negotiate it. Goes for Alton Davis. Back for Halliday. He's got four points tonight. One goal and three helpers. Here's Del Halliday. Darren Much checking him in the left corner. Halliday out with three seconds on the shot clock. Takes his shot and Elliott holds onto it. Elliott had Alton Davis in front of him screening. Well, yeah, was able once, to again, once again, that great timing by Halliday. And Elliott, even though that shot came from outside, he was forced to make a great save on that shot by Halliday. And uh, I think Halliday clearly been the outstanding player on the floor tonight. 8.40 to go in this third period. A 6-6 tie is Bill Callen tests Marty O'Neill. Steve Kisslinger with that wooden stick as you talked about. Grabs the ball, moves it up for Warren Blackwell. Blackwell gets cross-checked into the corner, or into the boards by Klein. Coquitlam gets the ball, here's Bill Callen. Callen has Walner to his left, goes to him. Looks behind his Rusty Kruger, and he takes the shot wide. 20 on the shot clock, Klein's dumped in front. Coyle the shot, hits a Victoria Shamrock player. Coyle gets locked up with Doddridge. Doddridge loses his stick in the deal. In front, here's Coyle. He's got Doddridge on him. Doddridge puts the hold on him. Still Coyle with the ball with seven on the shot clock. Pat Coyle, up close for Callan. Callan takes that punch to the head and also takes a shot and goes off the target. That'll be Victoria ball. And this is good all the time across. Lots of contact. Yeah, fist up in the face, Mr. Vick, just for good measure. And I think the referees are doing a great job letting the guys play the game, not bog it down with a ton of unnecessary penalties. I think every player on the floor tonight knows how important this game is to both teams. They're not going to take stupid penalties. Uh, they may be physical, they may try to intimidate, but they're not going to take silly penalties. The referee's doing a nice job letting them play. Here's Victoria with control, number 12, Brian Nicola. Nicola worked over by a couple of Coquitlam players, loses the ball, down to nine on the shot clock. Still with the ball, 7.30 to go, third period, a 6-6 tie. Alton Davis takes a shot off the target, goes behind the net. Pat Coyle will able to come in and help out as the shot clock runs down to zero anyways, with Coquitlam in possession. And one thing I'll certainly say for Brian Nick, and he clearly isn't, uh, hasn't got his fitness, nor certainly his stick skills back. He's only been to one practice after all. This is his first game. But he's certainly not hesitant about going for goal, taking on a guy one-on-one, -on -one, and uh, that's what he's going to do. Then. And the more he does that, the quicker he's going to get back into, uh, into real good playing form. Colby Rope can't pick up the loose ball. Instead, here's number four, Blair Mitchell. Mitchell for Coquitlam and a new shot clock. Goes into the right corner. Steve Kisslinger is there. Quickly, Chris Bride, the former South Fraser Stickman, all over him. The other direction is Bruce Alexander. He'll go off for a rest with 6.40 to go in this third period as Scott Fair brings the ball down for Victoria. Fair last year for the Nanaimo Timberman getting 44 points. And that one goes astray. Checked that 38 points with the Nanaimo last year with 23 goals. And 6.33 to go in this third period, and Coquitlam in possession. And both teams now platooning players, getting the offensive guys off whenever they can, and uh, getting the defensive players on. Not playing a complete offensive defensive uh, system, but both teams certainly platooning a lot of their uh, key offensive and defensive players. Doddridge quickly out of the floor. He's got two Adnax on him. It was Wilson. Zap throws a check. Doddridge still with control of the ball or tried for control, but now Blackwell does get control for Victoria. Blackwell lost it. Quickly into the stick for Brad Downey. Downey has fair all over him. Downey fakes a long pass, holds on to it, goes off for a breather. Jason Waller for Coquitlam with 5.50 on the clock. Third period action, 6-6 tie here from the Coquitlam Sports Center. Walder, right side for Coyle. In front for Kruger, he doesn't get to it. Walder after it now. Blackwell to check him. Walder still controlled. Five seconds on the shot clock. Over to Kruger. Kruger open in front of the net. Takes a shot on O'Neill. Goes right in the stick of Darcy Berthold. Long pass up for Del Halliday. Halliday's got to beat Walder. 
pulls back for Rysik. Rysik right in front of the net. He's got a man open. That was Lias, but it went out of the stick of Rysik into the corner. And what a great move by Rysik to get away from the competitive player. Had a smart play, trying to flip that backhand back to Lias. Just couldn't get it through to him. Here's Alton Davis. Scores! Alton Davis takes a pass from Kirby from Coquitlam. Kirby again in another big goal. This time it's a 7-6 lead for Victoria. A man oh man, Alden Davis is gonna wanna bottle that move and sell it. What a great move here as he comes in right up high, the big fake. Elliot knows that Alden Davis is not noted as a, as, as a great stick handler, certainly not noted as somebody who's gonna throw an awful lot of fakes. Bit on that fake big time, and Alden Davis just threw it into the open net. And something people forget about Alden Davis, noted more as a defensive player now, but when he played junior, he was Alden one Davis. heck of an offensive player. Assistant number 10, Jason Kirby, and number 13, Tyson Lias, time of the goal, 14.50. Gee, Dave, you got your work cut out for you, selecting a game star for today's game. Davis that time gets the goal. Kirby from Lias, or, excuse me, Kirby and Lias pick up the assist at 14.50 in this third period. Victoria now with the ball. Nikola takes the shot right on Elliott. He'll have to hurry if he can get his player out into the open. Instead, he holds onto it. Davis' is fourth goal on the season. So some of the lesser lights getting the goals today for both squads. In the right corner, Coquitlam with control. Now with nine on the shot clock. They trail now, seven to six. Here's Casey Zapp with five on the shot clock. Has Dalton Davis all over him. Can't get the shot away. The shot clock runs down to zero. And that time, Victoria with their bench standing and wrapping their sticks on the boards in an appreciative tone to their defensive core. Well, I mentioned uh, Victoria in particular running offense, defense, platooning guys. Uh, boy, have they run that bench well. Normal Dillon and the rest of the fellows on that bench have done a great job running that bench. They've made sure they got the right people out on the floor at the right time. Rising, Davis, Blackwell were out there playing defense. Uh, Kisslinger's had an outstanding game tonight, I think, for Victoria. Uh, this guy, now Berthiolm gets hammered to the floor by Klein. I think there's a bit of acting involved in that one. There's going to be no penalty. Yeah, that was 9.5 9 for artistic impression, that one. And uh, I think a good call by the official, or a good non-call by the official. We'll see what happens as uh, things go on, though. It's been a bit feisty in this third period, that's for sure. There's the minor interference going against Berthiolm as he clipped the feet of Coyle. Now Coyle's going to the penalty box off your screen with Del Halliday, so I'm not so sure it's a good trade for Coquitlam or Victoria for that matter. Two good players go to the box. Well, I think you've got to consider Victoria getting a bit of the edge here because, uh, well, pardon me, Coquitlam getting a bit, or, yeah, pardon me, Victoria getting a bit of the edge here uh, because Coyle is really the leader of this Coquitlam Mad Mac team. You're down a goal. That's the guy you want on the floor. Of course, Victoria. Halliday, he's uh, you know, the leading scorer in the league now. Let's call it a draw. Next week, we're in Maple Ridge. That's our game of the week. Coquitlam at Maple Ridge. Also, Victoria's at North Shore on Wednesday. Thursday, it's North Shore at New Westminster. New West back on the road and the next night in Burnaby. And then Burnaby is in Coquitlam and following him. In front, all along. Oh, good opportunity there for Wilson as he let that behind the back pass. The shot go at the goaltender. And I think it might have hit part of the bar and right in the stick of Tyson Lyons. Yeah, there's a case for that backhand pat or that backhand shot part. He looks flashy, but uh, really all it did was make a nice bounce off the boards. And uh, that's a that's a chance where where Wilson's got to shoot the ball. Nice crisp over the shoulder, or, uh, pardon me, overhand shot. That is what's going to score in Marty O'Neill. Lots of floor space out there. A five on five situation. Counting goaltenders. Here's Rysik. Open in front is Nick Hill. He can't pick it up. Now after it is AJ Smith. Smith with the ball, he'll leave it there and go off for a change. Coquitlam to the floor, they trail by 1-7-6. Time getting to be a factor now, three minutes to go. Walder in front for Callan, looks for the hat trick goal, he gets hammered to the floor. Now in the right corner. Zap puts it off for Kruger. Rusty Kruger with the ball. He opened the scoring here today at 24, ever since then he's been silent. Here's Kruger as the shot clock runs down to zero with 2.40. The goal in this third period in Victoria in possession. This is where they start to kill that full 30 seconds on the shot clock. Yeah, they can start. They, they can't go completely into a defensive shell, but you're right. They're going to use the clock wisely. And uh, once again, 
make darn sure that if they get down to three or four seconds left on the clock, roll up the corner or get it deep and try and bounce the ball off of Elliott. Don't give the Admix any kind of a chance for transition, mainly so Victoria can get their defensive guys back in the floor. They've done a masterful job of doing that so far in this third period. Victoria takes that shot off the target, goes the length of the floor. It'll be six seconds on the shot clock when O'Neill gets it. He fires at the length of the floor, it goes in for Coquitlam to get possession now into the stick of Dallas Elliott. And a 7-6 Victoria, Victoria Shamrock lead. Don't forget, on Saturday, July 11th, it's PCL baseball with the Tacoma Rainiers versus the Vancouver Canadians. All right, here on Rogers Community Television. Rook Ward calling the play-by-play -play of our Canadians coverage. Cordenly in front of the net, all by himself, set up by John Wilson. Cordenly able to get that opportunity. Yeah, there you see the opportunity by Cordenly. A great pass from Wilson, finding Cordenly wide open. And something Johnny Wilson's done very well tonight is pass the ball. His shooting touch hasn't quite come back to him, but he's moved the ball very well, found the open man there. He found Cordenly. But unfortunately, Cordenly, starting from the wrong side of the floor, had to get a twisted body around to get that shot. That slowed things down a bit. There's a shot, great save by Elliott there off the shot by Del Halliday, the league's leader in goal scoring. Tests the goaltender, Dallas Elliott, the MVP from the Philadelphia Wings of the NLL. Now here's Darren Much with 1.15 to go. Much leaves the ball there for the offensive talented Walter. Much goes off. Walter tries to beat Halliday one-on-one. -on -one. 12 on the short clock. 105 in the game clock. 7-6, Victoria lead. Here's Walter. Pass for Kruger. Five on the shot clock. Kruger's not going to get it away. It's just in front for Walter. All around shot. Great save there by O'Neill. Walter was able to squeak through and get a loose ball. And here we have a timeout. Steve Kisslinger has mentioned he'd like a timeout for Victoria. And a great, great timeout call by the Victoria Shamrocks. And what another super shift of defense. Really a bit of a lucky break for Walter. Just that loose ball kind of bounced to him. Uh, O'Neill. A spectacular looking save, but really in the right place at the right time. And once again, the Adnax, Les Wingrove, getting things set up. But they got 51 seconds, and you know the Victorias can run that clock right down. So realistically, the most the Adnax are going to have to work with is probably 21 seconds. A reminder to you that we only have three games left in our Rogers Lacrosse Game of the Week, beginning with that one next week with Maple Ridge hosting Coquitlam. Polka is at Burnaby. That's going to be a live broadcast on July the 19th. And that'll be a good one with the Junior A tilt. The WLA finishes off with the North Shore Indians with New Westminster there. Of course, times are 3 p.m. and 1 p.m. And of course, all of these games all season long with our Lacrosse Game of the Week couldn't be done without the help of our people here, which include our graphics operator, Sylvan Finn, our VTR replay operator, Rob Arnold. Happy birthday to Rob Arnold, by the way. He's 31 years old today. Rob Arnold on replay, as we had mentioned. Our cameras are operated by Greg Godfrey, Andrew Bertel, Marcel Glatt, Ron Rodriguez, Kevin McDonald. Our audio assistant is George Lamarcand. Our statistician is Lionel Chambers. And of course, our director, Mr. Jim Reese, as well, helped out by Dave Dick, who is our director of audio. Here, all bringing you our Rogers Lacrosse Game of the Week with this one from Coquitlam. And we are back with play. Here is Coquitlam. Trails by one goal, seven to six with 30 seconds to go. Here comes the offense here. Now they'll decide to stop and take a timeout. And we're gonna have 26 seconds of exciting WLA action coming at you after this timeout. Woo. Yeah, once again, a great timeout by the Colonel Madnax, and one that I'm sure everybody in the building knew was coming. They've got a chance now to get set up. And there's always some difference of opinion here as to whether that's a smart timeout or not, because of course it gives the defensive team a chance to get a little bit of a rest, get their guys out there. But all in all, with only 26 seconds left, they're playing for one shot. That's all they've got to tie this thing up. There you see the time on the clock there, 26 seconds. So uh, all in all, I think a good timeout call by left Lefkoe. He's setting the, uh, the offensive play now. 26 seconds to go. There you see Normal Dillon setting his troops out to the floor to, floor to go into defensive mode. They have a 26 point. They have 26 points in the standings. Coquitlam tied for second with 21. This is a big game for Coquitlam if they intend to catch Victoria. If not, you could pretty much will say that they'd be like to liking to get second spot all wrapped up and there's a shot by johnny wilson and 13 seconds left in the game now with victoria in control loose ball and bryce they can't control it bryce has lost control but quickly troy cordenly under the right wrist control can't control it with two seconds on the clock and this game is over the victoria shamrocks come up with their biggest 
win of the year. A big one here at the Coquitlam Sports Center. A come from behind. Seven to six victory here in Coquitlam over the Adenacs. Victoria elated with their efforts. Here's that opportunity at the end, a miss by Rusty Kruger. He just couldn't negotiate the pass. A hard one by Cordenley, and nonetheless, right at the stick, but unfortunately for Kruger, and fortunately for the Victoria Shamrocks. What a great victory for the Victoria Shamrocks on the road, and I think Dell Halliday to me was clearly the dominant player in the Florida Lake. Uh, you know, he picked up four points tonight, of course, took over the scoring lead, but all in all, controlled the ball, ran very well. Uh, for the Bad Max, I think Gil Cowan had an outstanding game, and of course, Jason Kirby doubling his scoring from his scoring output for the season. Two huge goals for, uh, for Jason Kirby, and uh, I think Marty O'Neill had an outstanding game in the Nets. I was torn between him and Jason Kirby for that third star, but uh, I think when somebody who isn't a goal scorer, you mentioned this in the game, uh, something that happened like, for Victoria and for Coquitlam, the non-goal scorers chipped in some goals. And Jason Kirby, what a great time for him to chip in a couple. Victoria wins it 7-6. to six. We will just begin our post-game show here at the Sports Center, and we'll send her down to Don Bensmiller. Thank you very much, guys. And Victoria has finally broken the Rogers jinx. They've won a game here on the lacrosse game of the week. Now, coming up, after we take a short break, don't go away. We're going to have some post-game information for you, a player of the game interview, as well as some highlights and scoring summaries. Stay with us. The Lacrosse Game of the Week is brought to you by ProJoy Lacrosse, the official team uniform of the BC Lacrosse Association. Get ready for the X-Line, built for combat. And there you see it, the Victoria Shamrocks defeat the Coquitlam Adnacks at home by a score of 7-6 to six in a very important game to the Adnacks. I think they really needed to win this one, and uh, they couldn't quite pull it off, although the Shamrocks have broken their Rogers jinx. Now what we're going to do is go over to Dave and Terry for some post-game summary. Take it away. Thank you very much, Don. And you're right, actually. I never thought of that. They did break up the Rogers jinx here. Congratulations to the Victoria Shamrocks who incidentally have now a seven-point lead over the Coquitlam Adnax and Maple Ridge Burrards, who are in the second-place battle. We don't know the outcome of the Maple Ridge game tonight. They're playing in Weston Abbotsford, but uh, a big win for Victoria and a great comeback in that third period, Dave. Oh, a huge win. What, what a win for Team Morale and Team Spirit going into this final stretch drive of the playoffs. You, know, you come over here without three or four team players. Freddie Penner's out of the lineup. Dwayne Jacobs is out of the lineup. And... Uh, you come up with a big win. Not only a big win, but a big come from behind win. You shut out the Adnax 3-zip in their, in their own building in the, in the third period. What a great thing for building Team Spirit. Okay, that's going to be a very, very enjoyable trip back to Victoria tonight for the Shamrocks. Well, let's have a look at the summary in that third period. Just three goals to speak of, and they were all off the sticks of the Victoria Shamrocks, who said they trailed 6-4 to four after two, and it was Rising as 19th, Doddridge as 15th, and then Davis, Alton Davis, with the winning goal from... Kirby and Lias at 14 minutes and 50 seconds, 50 to 47, a shots on goal in favor of the Adnax. And there's the penalties, zero for four, both power plays go zero for four, four power plays for each club. You know, rather low as far as penalties go anyways, but uh, a game in which seen the Victoria Shamrocks, uh, whether it was experience or defense, uh, they did her in the third period. Yeah, they did. I think one of the keys, and, and then we have both alluded to this during the game, is that the lesser lights really came up tonight. We saw Alton Davis getting the winning goal. Of course, Alton Davis, not known now as a big goal scorer, he's become a very good defensive player. And, of course, Jason Kirby, two goals tonight, and an assist as well, doubling his goal output for the, for the entire season. So, great input from the lesser lights. I thought Steve Kissinger had a great, uh, great game for the Victoria Shamrocks on defense, stripping the ball a couple of times from, uh, from uh, Adnack players. So, all in all, a good effort from the, Sham from the uh, Shamrock standpoint with every Everybody contributing. Okay, so replays. We're going to look at Neil Doddridge's goal, and here it is. Yeah, and there's Doddridge's shot. And there you see the defensive player for the Adnax, well back of Doddridge. As he starts to step out, of course, all that does is set up a great screen for Doddridge. Doddridge didn't shoot the ball very hard, just shot it around the screen. And, of course, Elliot had no look at it, and a big goal for Neil Doddridge. Huge goal for Neil Doddridge, which we had mentioned will be on the B side of the World Cup 
coming up in Baltimore, Maryland, playing for Scotland. Yeah, so. Neil Doddridge. <laughs> so uh, we're going to take a break and go to our player of the game, Del Halliday, standing by with Don Benson. Del Halliday is standing by. And first, Del, congratulations on the player of the game. I have a hat from Nike Canada for you. Oh, good, you. And a set of pads from the goalie store from Max Lacrosse. Yeah. And Norma Ann Eaton has contributed a haircut and some hair products. So there you go. Enjoy yeah. those. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what do you think? How would you guys pull this off tonight? Being seven players short, I what was your you, secret? Um, just a gutsy effort. I mean, everyone, uh, we were talking on the bus on the way here. Everyone looked focused, ready to play. We knew we had to play kind of above ourselves a little bit and everyone do their job because if there was one weak link tonight, we would have been done because uh, we needed everyone to really step up to, to win it. Marty O'Neill played outstanding. Absolutely, and Nirmal Dillon at the beginning of the game saying first he was going to look in the stands for some extra players and then uh, also, but uh, really key to win the loose ball fight. Yeah, and uh, it's difficult to do that against Coquillum. They've got a, a lot of guys that are good in the corners and, and uh, play it pretty physical. So, uh, you know, to get in there and, and get the advantage there is, is huge for us. And we just did it through hard work. Now, what about your season so far? You're tearing up the scoring. What, what's up with that? Well, uh, I, I'm just doing my job. I mean, everyone on the team has a job. And uh, the reason why we're winning is because everyone's doing their job. Um, and that's as simple as that. Uh, we need guys that... Like Marty to keep the ball out of the net, we need guys to, to stop people on the end, we need guys to put it in the net. So uh, if everyone does their job, then we, we pull off victories like we did tonight. Now, on to the World Cup. You leave Friday to go with Team Canada to Baltimore. Are you excited? Yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, I went to school in Baltimore, so I'm really looking forward to heading back there and seeing some people I haven't seen in a long time. And uh, just the competition as well, uh, you know, to get... Uh, that level of lacrosse and have it come from all around the world is outstanding. It's, it's going to be an honor to, to represent Canada there. And what about playing with some of those players from Ontario, some of the great players in Canada? How's that going to be for you? Uh, again, it's an honor you know, to be chosen for the team. Um, you know, most of us know each other, have played against or with each other, so uh, we're all fairly familiar with one another. Um, you know, it's, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be great. Thank you very much for joining us, and congratulations again on being the player of the game. That's Del Halliday for the Victoria Shamrocks player of the game in the Pro Joy Lacrosse Game of the Week. Let's go back to Terry Murray and Dave Evans. Thanks, Don. Del mentioning the World Cup play on July 19th. Mark this on your calendar. ESPN has coverage of uh, Canada versus Australia on the 19th, and on the 20th, it's the big tilt against the defending champion USA squad. That'll be on the 20th, so if you've got a satellite dish or you want to go to your local pub, uh, check out uh, Canada versus Australia in the 19th and on the 20th versus USA, Dave. Uh, we look forward to that squad uh, going out and giving them their best effort. Yeah, and I'm sure they will. And I, we certainly, as I said before, wish them all the best of luck at the World Championships. Now, we talked about uh, the lesser lights contributing. We're going to have a look now at the winning goal scored by Alton Davis. And what a great move by Davis. As I said before, he's going to want to bottle this and keep it or bottle it and sell it. Here comes Davis in front of the net. He gets the pass there. A nice little flip pass from Kirby. The big fake on Elliot, and Elliot just bit on it big time. Left the whole gaping side of the net, and Davis kind of went back to his junior days when he was a very good offensive player and uh, just buried it for the winning goal. And uh, nice to see, as I said, the lesser lights. And something Dale Halliday alluded to, Marty Neal had a heck of a good game. I think he won the goaltending duel tonight, played very, very well. And uh, I know uh, he's coming off not a particularly good uh, winter season in the National Lacrosse League and I'm sure it's very very gratifying for Marty to be having a very good year this year. We'll see the standings with Victoria now with the huge cushion 28 points seven points out in front of Coquitlam and Maple Ridge. Maple Ridge and Coquitlam sporting those identical 10 6 and 1 records. They're trying to get that score between Maple Ridge and New West out in Abbotsford but uh, to no avail 9 8 9 and 8 for the North Shore Indians with Russ Hurd in the lineup now. Uh, with 18 points, they'll be looking to catch Victoria or Coquitlam on your screen. And then the two teams, New Westminster, uh, with eight points. And, and Burnaby fighting it out for last spot in the standing. So a big victory for the Victoria. Dave, any last comments on this game? Well, I think, as you say, the real battle now is for the second, third, and fourth playoff spots. Realistically, Victoria, is, it's, they're going to be tough to catch for first place now. And, of course, New Westminster and Burnaby, they're... Uh, bottom feeders at this point but it's going to be a great race and of course our game next week Maple Ridge could put on the two teams that right now are tied for second place pending uh, the result of tonight's game in Abbotsford what a great game that's going to be next week on uh, on the Rogers game of the week that coming to you from Cam Neal Arena that is our next broadcast next week Victoria shooting 16.5 percent 
Coquitlam only 11.1% in today's game. That was the difference with Victoria coming out with a big 7-6 victory here from the Coquitlam Sports Center. That's it for us here, and we're going to take you to Don Bensmiller. Thank you very much, guys. And another stat that I noticed, and uh, a lot of turnovers on the 32nd, Coquitlam wasting a lot of 30-second times, and so maybe that was a bit of a shortcoming of theirs as well. So the final score here, 7-6 to six for Victoria. Congratu congratulations to the Shamrocks for finally breaking the Rogers jinx. Be sure to tune in next week at 3 o'clock for the lacrosse game of the week when we will feature the Coquitlam Adnax and the Maple Ridge Barrage. And as every Sunday, you can see it at 3 o'clock and 10 p.m. repeated. And the game and in New West and Maple Ridge, we're not sure yet. Tune in to InSport at 7 o'clock, and they'll probably be able to update you on that score. From the Coquitlam Sports Center, I'm Don Benzler saying good night. Hair services for Terry Murray and Dave Evans provided by Amadeus Hair Design. If your hair is not becoming to you, you should be coming to us. Amadeus Hair Design located at 20410 Fraser Highway, Langley.